This is AADT 2150U, Digital Technologies and Advanced Teaching Methods. The title for this particular video clip is Connectivist Use of Technology. If you're an avid social media user, or if you know tech-savvy people, you will recognize the, the scenario in this video. But before, let's have a look at the analysis questions. The analysis questions for this particular video clip are as follows. What is the meaning of competence in the workforce? How is learning 2.0 different from e-learning? And what is the social life of information? Consider this scenario. Jacob was born with the internet and he's part of the generation which we call digital natives. He played with a laptop as soon as he was able to sit on his own and did his first video conference when he was 18 months old. He knew how to click on a YouTube shortcut on a browser and memorize the sequence of keys on the keyboard to type the titles of the Disney videos he liked to watch over and over before he was even in kindergarten. He literally learned to write before he learned how to write, or at least he was able to recognize letters in order to gain access to the information he wanted. As he grew up, when he wondered about something, he knew exactly how to get information on the internet or to contact someone who we thought would know from his list. By the time Jacob reached adolescence, not only had he created an online identity for himself through social media, but he was also connected through several kinds of networks. He had a passion for cars, soccer, and computer programming. He knew people from all parts of the world who shared his passion and who could answer his questions when he faced problems. He went to university and continued working with the various networks he was connected with. When he started working for a computer service company, he felt skilled enough to go through the interview and obtain a position. When he did his first service call on a PC computer, he faced a problem he never encountered before. He picked up his smartphone and sent messages to one of his friends who didn't really know how to solve the problem. So he messaged another contact from a forum he goes on who asked for some screen captures. When that contact looked at the screen chapters, he sent Jacob a link by email to a wikiHow he had written about the same problem. Jacob read the wikiHow and solved the problem. One might ask, did that make Jacob incompetent? Think about the concept of competency and the lame meaning of the term. You call someone to repair, to repair your fridge at home. He looks at the fridge and he says, your thermostat needs to be repla replaced. He goes to his truck, picks up the tools and changes the thermostat. He charges you for his service call and the part. You think to yourself, this is too much money, but I have to pay for his expertise and the fact that he came to my place. Consider this other scenario. The refrigerator serviceman comes to your place to look at your fridge. He scratches his head, pulls out his Blackberry and calls someone. Then he asks if he can use your computer and logs into his email account. He pulls out a few website, reads a bit, goes back to the fridge, then back to his email. He writes a text message to someone and then he tells you, I think your thermostat is gone. We have to replace it. He goes to his truck to get the part in his tools. He changes the thermostat, then he gives you the bill. What do you think most people would think in face of this scenario? What is the difference between the two scenarios we just presented? Both scenarios refer to the refrigerator repair person. One knows what the problem is, and the other needs to get connected to a network to troubleshoot the problem. What the scenario suggests is that the refrigerator repair person that needs to be connected to his network to solve the problem would look somewhat incompetent. However, in the high-tech industry, the professional industry and the corporate industry, it is often the case that experts need to be connected to the network in order to solve problems. The more connected they are, the better they are at solving problems. This refers to the concept of collective intelligence described in a previous course, but also to two other concepts, e-learning 2.0 and a social life of information. E-learning and learning 2.0. Let's see the difference between traditional learning, traditional e-learning, and learning 2.0. A 
According to Wikipedia, e-learning includes all forms of electronically supported learning and teaching, and more recently, EdTech. The information and communication systems, whether networked learning or not, serve as specific media to implement the learning process. The term will still most, most likely be utilized to reference out-of-classroom and in-classroom educational experiences via technology, even as advances continue in regard to devices and curriculum. E-learning is the computer and network-enabled transfer of skills and knowledge. E-learning applications and processes include web-based learning, computer-based learning, virtual education, opportunities, and digital collaboration. Content is delivered via internet, intranet, extranet, audio, or videotape, satellite TV, and CD-ROM. It can be self-paced or instructor-led and include media in the form of text, image, animation, streaming video, and audio. Now let's look at eLearning 2.0. The term e-learning 2.0 is a neologism from CSCL system, that's Computer Supported Collaborative Learning Systems, that came about during the emergence of Web 2.0. From an e-learning 2.0 perspective, conventional e-learning systems were based on instructional packets which were delivered to students using assignments. Assignments were evaluated by the teacher. In contrast, new e-learning places increase emphasis on social learning and on social software such as blogs, wikis, podcasts, and virtual worlds such as Second Life. This phenomenon has also been referred to as long-tail learning. See also C. Lee Brown and Adler in 2008. They have an interesting book about this. E-learning 2.0, by contrast to e-learning system not based on CSCL, assumed that Knowledge as meaning and understanding is socially constructed. Learning takes place through conversations about content and grounded interaction about problems and actions. Advocates of social learning claim that one of the best ways to learn something is to teach it to others. The Social Life of Information is a book that was written by Sealy Brown and Digid in 2000. The book written by Digid and Sealy Brown talks about a complex concept called the social life of information. It points to the problem about how people feel like when they're drowning in information because everything about human life is on the internet and human.com is in constant state of information overload. The authors explain that with the internet, some people predicted the end of many things, namely the end of the press, television and mass media, the end of brokers and other intermediaries, the end of firms, bureaucracies and similar organizations, the end of universities, the end of politics, the end of government, the end of cities and regions, and the end of nation-state. However, as these authors suggest, the concept of information will remain misunderstood for as long as we consider that information is not alive. We have noticed that all the bullet points stated above did not stop existing in the past 10 years, but they have changed a lot. This is because people are connected in a very different way. Information flows more rapidly than ever. For example, we learn about what is going on in our hometown faster than the people who live there if we are connected on Facebook. People become agents of information. Computers become agents of information. The information flows in the network because of the multiplicity of interconnections between the nodes. The synthesis questions for this video clip are the following. Did you ever have an experience similar to Jacob's case? Do you want to share it? What are the possible advantages and pitfalls of connectivism? What is the relationship between the concepts of learning 2.0 and the social life of information?